Geisha Hands, Chapter 1 The shoji slid open, and the maid bowed and fluttered about to take Katsu, Zori, and Hayori. Yuki bowed as Katsu glided over the wooden step and walked up to the table. The white hem of Katsu's yukata fluttered as she seated herself. Yuki hurried to pour the ocha, careful not to spill or overfill the cup. Yuki! Katsu snatched her wrist. Yuki struggled not to drop the teapot. You neglected your nails, I see. Katsu released her hand. Yuki set the pot down, her hands shaking. She bowed her head. Gomenesai, Yuroshite kudasai, One-san. I don't care for your excuses. Katsu sipped her ocha, her eyes closed. Get your nails fixed this afternoon. She set the cup down and flicked her eyes at Yuki. Hi, One-san. She bowed her head again. A pair of Katsu's friends had been requested at the same party, and together, they wanted to dance. Yuki had been the only Maiko present, leaving it up to her to play all the music. The geisha were drunk and danced several pieces from the latest kabuki plays without tiring. They had finally conceded to stop when one of the gohiki had noticed blood dripping down the strings of Yuki's shamisen. One of her blisters had popped, making her injuries appear far more dramatic. Yuki sat, frozen, still hearing Katsu's words. There was to be an important man then tonight. Katsu turned and smiled, holding her cup. I have already told Oito to give your chores to the maids for the evening. See to it that your nails are perfect and that you bathe tonight. Meet me at the Nakagawa Ochaya tonight once you are dressed, and don't be slow. Yuki took the teacup back into her hands and let the last of the warmth soothe her fingers as she sipped. Katsu's younger maid returned and set a tray of onigiri on the table. Yuki set her cup down. Her nervous hands caused it to clink on the table. Katsu wrinkled her nose at the sound. Is there going to be someone of notice at this party, One-san? Katsu waited while Yuki poured another cup of ocha, then answered as she lifted the cup to her lips. There is to be an important man there tonight. His name is Minoru-san of the Fujimoto family. The maid gathered the discarded bandages and hurried away to dispose of them. Yuki plucked one of the onigiri and took a bite. It was pickled plum. She relished the acidic, sour sweetness. The nori wrapper melted on her tongue. I thought Juru-san was your danna, One-san. Juru-san will always be my danna, she smiled as she said it. But Minoru-san is a new gohiki and does not yet officially patronize any maiko or geisha. Katsu sipped, then looked at the contents of the cup. Minoru-san is a wealthy man come from Naga. He owns a sake business. I ensured that we serve only his brand at the Ochaya for this evening's party. Yuki placed her hands in her lap. Why would Katsu want me to make such an impression on this man? In the past, Katsu had assured Yuki that such important men would ignore a young Maiko, as they were more interested in intelligent conversation, not childish drinking games. She could only wonder, could Katsu be arranging for suitors to become my Danna? I have other matters to attend to. Don't let me catch you wasting time at the sweet shop or off running unnecessary errands. Katsu stood and one of the maids showed her out the door. Yuki sat frozen, still hearing Katsu's words. There is to be an important man there tonight. Minoru-san is a wealthy man. There seemed to be no other explanation for Katsu pushing Yuki to make such a strong impression on a gohiki. Aren't you coming? Yuki jerked her head up. Seeing her Onesan roll her eyes, she jumped to her feet, making Katsu more annoyed with her lack of grace. Yuki followed Katsu out into the street, into the little shop above the onsen, where Katsu's manicurist worked. At the entrance, Katsu turned to Yuki. Go upstairs and get your nails done. Shiri has already been instructed on how I would like them. Yuki bowed, her hands shaking. Hi, Onesan. She scurried up the stairs, hoping to salvage the day and please Katsu. 
Shiri was an old woman, nearly blind, but somehow able to paint beautiful designs on even the tiniest nails for the Miyako Odori performances, or if a geisha had the coin. Yuki sat down and allowed the apprentice to scrub her hands and knead pearl cream into her cuticles. The cream felt good on her sore fingers. Her hands had been damaged to begin with, and Sensei had smacked her hands several times that morning. They were learning a new song, and Yuki was having trouble combining the sliding with plucking. Her nails had chipped while practicing in class. Yet another mistake. On her own, Yuki could not afford such a fine manicurist, especially as often as Katsu sent her. But the Sawari Okiya covered her expenses. Okasan had balked at the cost, but Katsu had smoothed things over with tea and sweet words. Katsu's success came from her close relationship to her Okasan, as well as her friendship to the Okiya Atatori, Momoko. Katsu had become a rather wealthy geisha after paying off her debts and fronted the money for the Seiya Okiya to expand their property for the debut of two additional novice Maiko. In exchange, the Seiya Okasan had a small addition built so that Katsu could have her own rooms. Katsu employed her own maids, but her tiny household often relied on the larger Okiya for supplies and extra servants. Katsu was allowed to use the main Okiya kimono collection in addition to her own wardrobe. Such generosity was unheard of in the Hanamachi, but Katsu was also not the average geisha, and Yuki was grateful for the luxury by association. Shidi entered the room and stood behind the apprentice. She finished her work and bowed. Shidi took her place as the apprentice scurried off to the kitchen. Yuki spread her hands on the table for Shidi to inspect. The old manicurist took Yuki's hand into her own wrinkled hand. You neglect your nails like a fishmonger's wife. She said this to Yuki at every visit, sometimes even before Yuki had her hands on the work table. She bowed her head twice. Gomen Asai, make my hands fine again. Hmm. Shidi nodded and took out her paints. Your Onesan tells me that this evening is very important. I will paint blossoms on your nails. Maybe it will be enough to fool those men into thinking your hands are delicate hummingbird fingers rather than those of a peasant. Arigato, onagaishimasu. Yuki bowed her head again and watched Shidi mix the powdered colors into the varnish. You know Katsu takes much better care of her nails. A true geisha. Shidi muttered as she worked. You should be more careful. You are going to be a full geisha soon. People will expect more of you. Yuki suppressed the desire to sigh. Shidi's maid came in with Ocha, and Yuki watched the old woman sip from a cracked cup. She thanked the gods every day for being tied to Katsu. Without such an influential Onesan, Yuki may have been reduced to a household maid by now. Yuki's Okasan had paid Katsu a large sum to take her on as an apprentice. It would have been cheaper for one of the resident geisha to take on Yuki, but both already had apprentices in training and could not take on more than one at a time. Okasan had seen it as an opportunity to unite the Seiya Okiya with the Sawari Okiya. As always, I endeavor to follow your wisdom, Oshiri. Yuki looked over her half-finished fingers. The tiny paintings did help draw attention away from the scabs and bruises. The background was pink and faded up to white at the tip. Yuki knew that the geisha at her okiya would be jealous. They could only afford such extravagant manicures for dances and important banquets. The Miyako Odori performances was only a week away, just before her arike. Yuki so enjoyed being a part of the recital, even if it meant enduring more chastising from Shiri for new nail polish. She had already received her new Mayogi for the dance. Perhaps I can convince Okasan to purchase a new Kinchaku to match. Yuki had seen other Maiko with Kinchaku that were made to match the recital Mayogi. They also had matching combs and handkerchiefs. She knew it was simply wishful thinking, as she did not have the funds to buy much herself and had no desire to charge it to the Okiya's account and add to her debt. 
Shiri's work was slow, giving Yuki plenty of time to ponder. Her thoughts shifted to Minoru. The Gohiki were mainly made up of wealthy nobles and businessmen. On occasion, women liked to throw lavish banquets at their estates or employ a geisha to serve Chanoyu. Some geisha had to attend to old or unattractive Gohiki. Hoshi had frequently complained about her danna. Yuki shivered. What if he is foul or ill-tempered? Can I truly sit with a smile on my face? Perhaps that is why Geisha drinks so much. Shiri handed Yuki two small glass bottles. Yuki had been sitting patiently, waiting for her nails to dry, while Shiri drank her second cup of ocha. Katsu asked for me to give you these. One is a salve for your damaged hands. The other is pearl cream to reduce the scarring and lighten the skin. She waved her hand. Katsu said you would be in a hurry today. Yuki nodded. Hi! She thrust the gold bottles into the pocket of her sleeve. Shiri shooed her again. Go on then. Domo arigato. Yuki bowed and scurried out the door. As she reached the street, she could smell the warm, wet scent of the onsen. It was only the hour of the goat, and Katsu had instructed her to take a bath. Yuki decided she could spare some time for a more luxurious bath than Katsu would have recommended.